Divorce? I wanted to believe I misheard it, but I clearly heard the word. You're divorcing me to marry someone else? This was the first time I noticed the kind husband once I knew were no longer here. Sadness overwhelmed me, and tears began to grow. Oh no, she's crying. She put her hand on her chest and gave me a pitiful look. Poor you, but I'm more suited for a high-earning man. A woman like you who doesn't even care about her appearance can't be by his side. Shocked, my body trembled, barely able to stand. Yet I still couldn't let go, so I asked my husband. Didn't you tell me to come home early today because it's our wedding anniversary? Oh, I forgot. Struggling to suppress my rising breath, I desperately tried to convey my feelings. My husband just snickered. I felt an unbearable humiliation and extreme misery. But in that moment, I wanted to tell myself not to cry. They'll face unimaginable consequences. My name is Jane Miller, a 45-year-old employee at a foreign company. I live with my husband, Brian, who is the same age, and our son, Sam, who is preparing for college next year. My husband has been kind enough to take care of the house while I work. To outsiders, we probably look like the perfect family. However, recently, I've noticed something odd about my husband. Don't get too close to the screen. You'll hurt your eyes. Hmm. My husband had been staring at his phone for over 30 minutes. Are you watching some interesting videos? I stopped my computer work and approached him from behind. He quickly closed the phone screen in a hurry. I thought I saw a glimpse of a message app, but I wasn't sure, so I didn't ask. For the past six months or so, he's been constantly checking his phone. Even at home, he never lets it out of his sight. Whenever he has a moment, he's glued to the screen. It was natural for me to feel uneasy about his sudden change, especially since he used to prefer TV over his phone. I'm going to take a bath. Okay. He jumped up from the sofa and headed to the bathroom, of course, with his phone. He sometimes stays in there for over an hour, maybe playing with his phone while soaking in the tub. His back looked like that of a stranger, making me feel anxious. While he was in the bath, I tried to distract myself by focusing on the work I brought home. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't shake the unease. I ruffled my hair and closed my laptop sitting on the sofa. The warmth left by my husband, who had been sitting there earlier, made me feel strangely lonely. My husband's suspicious behavior didn't stop there. He started paying attention to his appearance as well. <laughs> He was fixing his hair in front of the sink. Uh, it's rare for you to use hair wax. Going somewhere? An old high school friend got in touch, so I'm meeting them. But your school was an old boys school, right? Would a man really care about his hairstyle when meeting another guy? The face he made in the mirror looked strange, occasionally smiling at himself. It was very suspicious. All set. Satisfied with his hairstyle, he nodded and put on a sweater with a famous brand logo on his chest. At the entrance, he put on a watch he recently bought, which cost over $10,000. I'll be back later. He sprayed some cologne and left. The watch was heavy and luxurious, clearly a high-end item. Recently, my husband started going out on weekends more often. That night, while making dinner, my husband seemed even happier than he had been in the morning. He was smiling while cooking, and the meal seemed very elaborate. He was using white wine, and the kitchen was filled with a lovely aroma. Dinner looks amazing tonight. What are you making? It's an aqua pazza. Let's use the good dishes for a change. He pulled out some nice ceramic plates that had been stored away for a long time. He carefully plated the finished dish, and our dinner table suddenly looked luxurious. Oh, it looks delicious. Wait a minute. I was about to dig in when my husband stopped me. What's wrong? I'm starving. I want to take a picture first, so hold on. He started taking pictures of the food with his phone. I could understand wanting to capture such a beautiful dish, but this had never happened before, so it felt strange. Okay, you can eat now. With his permission, our son and I began to eat. While eating, I tried to subtly probe him. You've been dressing nicely and making these fancy meals. Did something good happen? Nope, nothing in particular. But I noticed that he blinked rapidly at that moment, confirming my suspicion. 
Something was definitely off. I thought about it as I took a bite of the tender fish. Since then, my husband became unusually kind. He was always kind, but now it felt forced, like he was walking on eggshells. I opened my planner to check my schedule and then realized the mystery of my husband's behavior. Our 20th wedding anniversary was coming up. I wanted to tell my past self how cute the sticker decorations were around that date. If it weren't for that, I would have completely forgotten. My husband must be planning something special for that day. That's why he was searching frantically on his phone, studying his appearance, and experimenting with fancy dishes. Back then, I was blissfully naive, unaware of the reality. Now, I want to shake myself and say, that's not what was happening at all. But I was completely oblivious, eagerly anticipating a possible surprise for my husband. Mom, there's something I want to talk to you about. What's up? My son, who is usually confident, now looked uneasy. He's a smart kid, so it was rare for him to be this nervous. Lately, when I come back from study group, Dad's not home. What? But you usually come home around 9 p.m., right? He's not there at that time? Yeah, but dinner's always ready, so I'm fine. I'm sure he hesitated to tell me, but I appreciated that he did. <laughs> Thanks for telling me. Don't worry. I think I know what's going on. You do? You have a school trip tomorrow, so you should get some rest. Good night. My son went to his room with a relieved expression. It bothered me that my husband was out so late, but knowing how kind and family-oriented he was, I convinced myself it was nothing to worry about. He's probably just having drinks with friends after work, I thought, brushing my teeth before bed. The next morning, my son left for his four-day school trip. Take care, and have fun. It's not exactly for fun, but I'll enjoy it. After seeing him off, I got ready for work. I can't be late for the train. I hurriedly put on my shoes as my husband spoke to me. Can you try to come home early tonight? I'll try. I think I can make it home by 7 p.m. if I hurry. Why? I pretended not to know. Today was our 20th wedding anniversary, so I expected my husband was planning something. I'll tell you when you get home. Hmm. Now I'm really curious. All right. I'll come home early. His face lit up and I found his excitement endearing. Even though I was usually busy at work today, the hustle felt pleasant. I worked as quickly as possible. Thank you for your hard work. I'm leaving on time today. I stood up right as the clock struck 5 p.m. and quickly left the office. I texted my husband to let him know I'd be home earlier than expected. I hurried through the evening crowd at the station. Since our son was born, 18 years had passed without us having much time as a couple. But tonight, it would be just the two of us. Should I pick up a nice bottle of wine on the way? Or maybe he's already prepared something special. Thinking about it, I quickened my pace home. I'm home! I called out as I opened the front door, but there was no response. Is he hiding somewhere? I looked down to take off my shoes, and then I saw something shocking. <gasps> What's this? In front of me was a pair of cute pumps with a ribbon, and they weren't mine. My heart started pounding. It felt like someone was telling me not to go any further. I tried to convince myself it was a gift for me, but that was clearly not the case. I took a deep breath and slowly walked towards the living room. I opened the door, hoping what I was about to see wasn't true. Oh, hey. My husband raised a hand casually, and beside him was an unfamiliar woman. They were sitting comfortably on the sofa, probably watching TV. That sofa was a cherished memory from when we first got married. I felt a surge of anger as if that memory had been tainted in an instant. Who is this? I asked coldly, and the woman feigned fear. Oh no, she's scary. Brian, help me. The woman who looked to be in her mid-thirties clung to my husband using a sweet, pleading tone. This is Mary. I'm dating her now. He revealed their relationship without hesitation, and I let out a choked cry. This woman, Mary, was my husband's mistress. We jumped right into the main topic, so I think we scared your wife. <laughs> my bad. Her hand was adorned with perfectly manicured nails. Her hair was glossy and well-kept, clearly spending a lot on her appearance. 
I found myself unconsciously touching my own nails and hair. When was the last time I went to a salon? My nails were overgrown and I had forgotten to cut them. Comparing myself to this mistress, I felt pathetic. After a long silence, my husband spoke. So, yeah, I want a divorce. Divorce? I wanted to believe I misheard, but I clearly heard the word. I'm divorcing you to marry Mary. For the first time, I realized the kind husband I once knew was no longer here. Sadness overwhelmed me and tears began to flow. Oh no, she's crying. She put her hand on her chest and gave me a pitiful look. Aw, oh, poor you, but I'm more suited for a high-earning man. A woman like you, who doesn't even care about her appearance, can't be by his side. She provocatively spewed her words, making me shiver in anger. Once we're divorced, this luxury condo will be mine, so you better leave. Our home, this condo worth over one million dollars, had perfect security and was conveniently connected to the station. Even if sold now, it would still hold great value. We're going to live here soon. Mary looked around the room with a dreamy expression. The kitchen is so spacious. Cooking here would be fun. I'll cook for you. Just like you saw my aqua pazza was great, right? A dull shock ran through my head. My husband had been cooking elaborate dishes not for us, but for this woman. We were just his test subjects. Shocked, my body trembled, barely able to stand. Yet I still couldn't let go, so I asked him. Didn't you tell me to come home early today because it's our wedding anniversary? Huh, <laughs> wedding anniversary? Today marks our 20th year of marriage. My husband suddenly looked as if he remembered something. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. I struggled to suppress my rising breath, desperately trying to convey my feelings. He just snickered. <laughs> it had nothing to do with you. All my efforts were for Mary. I only treated you nicely out of a slight sense of guilt. It's clear my husband's heart no longer belonged to me. My mind cooled rapidly and the tears stopped. I took a deep breath and accepted their demands. If that's how it is, I'm happy to let you go. Really? I was worried you'd put up a fight. He smiled the brightest smile of the day. They embraced, jumping up and down in joy. I'll be staying at Mary's place for a while, so you better move out within a week. I'll take Sam with me, okay? Yeah, we don't need a kid around for our new life together. Besides, he's a high school senior. He's not cute anymore. Hearing them speak ill of my son, I almost lost my composure. But by this point, I was already plotting my revenge, so I managed to keep my cool. Fine, I'll move out within a week. Thanks, I appreciate it. They left, and the room fell silent. Exhaustion washed over me, but I couldn't afford to waste time. I immediately started preparing for the move, searching for a moving company, online, and making a quick reservation. A few days later, the divorce process was complete, and our marriage was com officially over. My son and I moved to my parents' house. My phone was confiscated during the school trip, so I was shocked when I finally checked my messages. My son casually mentioned it as he ate an apple pie my mother had baked. I had told him to come straight to my parents' house after the trip instead of going home. I debated whether to tell him everything, but he'd be starting college next year. There was no point in hiding the truth, so I decided to be honest. His reaction was much more nonchalant than I expected. Oh, I see. So I'll be going to school from here now? You're not surprised? I kind of had a feeling. He smiled as if amused by my obliviousness. You're really clueless, Mom. You totally missed the mark. Hearing that from a teenage boy really stung. But then he said, It's okay to be a little clueless. Being too sharp can be exhausting. He drank his tea like an old man, and his demeanor gradually helped me regain my composure. And just three days later, I received word that Brian had remarried his mistress. Uh, congratulations. We should celebrate. Wow, you're surprisingly considerate. Yeah, how about some good wine? Sure, I'll take care of it. Brian, who had acquired a beautiful mistress and a luxury condo, was clearly riding high. I decided to give them a grand celebration. I sent them a bottle of vintage wine from my parents' cellar, along with something else. 
Four days later, just as I expected, I received a call from Brian. I need to talk to you in person. Come over right now. Even though he demanded I come immediately, I was at work. But knowing how he lived without regard to time or day, I agreed. I'll be there soon. I told my boss I wasn't feeling well and left early, heading to the luxury condo that was once my home. Even though it was once my own house, it felt strange to need permission to enter, thanks to the auto-lock system. I rang the doorbell and Brian greeted me. Come in. My ex-husband, who had grown arrogant, led me to the living room unaware of the hell he was about to enter. Took you long enough. Mary was standing there with her arms crossed, her glossy hair and manicured nails still immaculate. On the dining table beside her were several documents. I had a feeling things would go my way and couldn't help but smile. What are you smiling at? Did you think it's funny to send something like that? She slammed the table, and the papers fluttered. Unfazed, I calmly responded with a smile. It wasn't a joke. It was a legitimate gift. Didn't you like it? <laughs> are you kidding? She waved her hands in frustration, looking like a furious actress. This condo is going on the market? Yes, along with a bottle of wine. I had sent them documents informing them that the condo was up for sale. I didn't see the wine I sent. Did you already drink it? I looked around the living room, deliberately ignoring the topic they were so focused on. My dismissive attitude clearly didn't sit well with them. Their faces turned red with anger. Look at me when I'm talking to you. She slammed the table again. What's the meaning of this? This place is supposed to be mine. His language had become cruder, which saddened me. Ah, you've changed. You used to be such a kind and gentle person. He raised an eyebrow, clearly irritated. I like who I am now, no matter what you say. Then enjoy your new life in a different home with her. What do you mean by that? Brian was growing more and more frustrated with my evasive answers. He started tapping his foot nervously, causing the tea on the table to shake. Was he always this restless? Are you sure you want to say this in front of her? It seemed he has secrets for Mary. If so, what I was about to say could potentially end their marriage. He furrowed his brow and nodded slightly, signaling me to continue. The condo is in my name. She leaned forward in shock, while Brian looked dumbfounded. You really are careless, Brian, forgetting to change the name on the deed. Or maybe you just never thought to do it in the first place. The truth is, this condo was a wedding gift for my parents. They bought it, and the deed was in my name as part of an early inheritance. You didn't contribute a penny to it, and that hasn't changed since we got married. I'm glad you never noticed, Brian. Thanks to that, I can now sell it. No way! She stepped back in disbelief. But you told me you bought this place with money from your successful business. Business? What business? He said he was running a company and making stable profits. It turned out that Brian had been lying to her all along. Sweat was beating on his forehead, and he kept swallowing nervously. It was only a matter of time before she discovered the truth. So you said you like who you are now, but do you also like lying to your mistress? You really like being a fake, huh? I tried to make eye contact with Brian, but he kept avoiding my gaze, nervously sipping his tea. Lying? Mary furrowed her brow, not understanding the situation, but my sense of revenge told me to keep her in the dark a little longer. Anyway, we're divorced now, and I don't need this place anymore, so I'm selling it. No, he yelled. You can't just tell us that and expect us to accept it. Mary also raised her voice in protest, as expected. It wouldn't be easy to get them out, so I decided to push them. Then why don't you buy it back, Brian? Buy it back? He pointed at himself, his mouth hanging open. Yes, after all, your company's profits are stable, right? Mary is just praising you as a high-earning man, so it should be easy, right? I expected Brian to be thrilled with my proposal. Instead, he turned pale, his hands trembling. What's wrong? Is there a problem? No, no, it's just... It was Mary who reacted the way I expected. That's right, we can do that. She clapped her hands, pleased with herself. It's a good idea. Why don't you buy it back? I joined in, acting generously. It might hurt your finances a little, but with your income, you'll make it back in no time, right, Brian? Uh, yeah. The Mary's thoughts began to wander in a different direction. Wait, why don't we just buy a house instead? Her eyes widened as she considered the possibility. Watching her emotions fluctuate was like riding a roller coaster. 
Yeah, if we move a little farther from the station, we could buy a house with a yard for the same price as this condo. <laughs> that might be better. Her determination seemed to solidify, and she turned to Brian. Let's leave this condo and buy a new house. Wait, buying a house all of a sudden? Mare is puzzled by Brian's hesitant attitude. What's there to worry about? Afraid you can't handle the mortgage? Sam goes to a private school, so you must have plenty of money, right? Sighing inwardly, I watched Brian squirm, unable to confess the truth. Is it time to reveal everything? Feeling it was a waste of time to drag this out, I finally revealed Brian's true identity to Mary. He doesn't have the money to buy a house because he's a house husband. You! House husband? Yes, he's not a high-earning man, at all. He's just unemployed. Mary stepped back, shocked. Brian hates that his younger colleagues were getting promoted ahead of him, and he quit his job without telling me. When he came home that day, he said, I'm done with that job. He drank heavily, out of frustration. I understand his resentment, but I thought quitting over that was weak. Fortunately, I was also working, so I suggested he become a house husband. Since then, I've been the sole breadwinner, supporting the family on my own. Our son went to a private school for middle school, and I could afford his extracurricular activities. With Brian's income, it would have been impossible. So when he told you he was a company president, that was a lie. Brian slumped into a chair, his elbows on the table, too ashamed to look up. How could you deceive me like this? The menacing tone in her voice sent shivers down my spine. Her eyes were burning with anger, ready to explode. What's with all the lies about business success and buying this condo? Everything was a lie, wasn't it? She spat the words out as if they were venom. Brian froze in shock. From the moment we met until today, everything was a lie, she murmured, throwing her hands in the air in defeat. Now I was curious about how they met, but that would have to wait. I had other questions for Brian. Why did you lie to her and have an affair wanting a divorce from me? He finally looked up and began to speak slowly. At first, being a house husband was great. You appreciated my efforts. But over time, I started to feel miserable, knowing I earned less than you even when I was working. His voice trembled as he spoke, his shoulders hunched, looking as if he might disappear. I never looked down on you for being a house husband. In fact, I admired your ability to handle household chores. But then you met Mary at a cafe one day. He nodded silently. Mary thought he was a self-employed businessman because he was at a cafe during that day. And he couldn't correct her assumption, so their relationship continued from there. His self-esteem, which had been low because of work, was boosted by her compliments. Brian started dating her, unable to stop the lies. The more she praised me, the more I believed I was actually amazing. I started to feel like I was the one supporting the family. Believing those lies from his mistress, he even told me he wanted a divorce. That's what led to this whole mess. Finally hearing the truth, I felt a sense of closure. Now I could move on and I reached into my bag. Don't mess with me. You are unemployed and can't even keep this condo. What was the point of marrying you? Her voice, though muffled by the walls, was incredibly loud. I'm really sorry. Brian kept bowing his head, repeatedly apologizing like a broken record. Seeing a 45-year-old man begging a 30-something woman for forgiveness made me pity him. He kept apologizing, but her anger showed no signs of subsiding. I don't need a man like you anymore. We're done. Refusing to accept his apology, Mary declared her intention to divorce. Even Brian, who had accepted his mistakes, protested. No, I still love you despite everything. But her response was cold. I don't care about that. I'm leaving, and I'll send you the divorce papers later. Make sure you sign them. What if I don't sign? Then I'll sue you for fraud. Fraud? Brian turned pale, showing the most fear I'd seen all day. Since he'd lied about his job to get married, he had indeed deceived her. But could she really press charges over that? As I wondered, she added something shocking. Even if the police don't take action, my old gang friends will. It turns out she used to run with a rough crowd and still have many connections. Terrified, Brian finally agreed to the divorce. With the end of the conversation in sight, I pulled out the final document from my bag. Here, both of you sign this. I placed the papers in front of them, detailing the alimony they owed me. I put a black pen in front of each of them, pressuring them to sign immediately. We can't pay this! We need to find a new place to live, and we don't have any savings! Her plan to marry into wealth had collapsed, leaving her with nothing. I briefly considered showing mercy, but that thought quickly vanished. I remembered my son's face. The woman in front of me had taken my son's father away. My desire for revenge burned stronger. There's no need to force a signature. Mary's eyes lit up with hope, but I quickly dashed it. I could just enforce it legally. 
letting your employer find out the truth. That's so unfair. Who's really being unfair here? You had an affair with a married man and thought you could just replace me. Where's the fairness in that? So, are you going to sign or not? I pressed her for a decision. She trembled as she reluctantly signed the papers, knowing that losing her job would make her life even harder. She decided to sign and pay alimony while working. Now it's your turn, Brian. Unlike Mary, he signed without hesitation. Thank you both. In three days, the realtor will come, so be out by then. With those words, they hung their heads and quietly said, "Okay." Don't forget to send the keys to my parents' house. With that, I left the defeated pair behind and walked out of the condo. Later, I received a call from the realtor confirming they had found a buyer for the condo. Of course, it wasn't Brian. The proceeds from the sale were meant to go to my parents, but they insisted I use the money for my son's college tuition. Brian and Mary got divorced, and she quit her job out of shame. Brian didn't find a job here and returned to his rural hometown. The day before he left, he called me. He reminisced about our marriage. But I was over him, so I quickly ended the call. Now I'm still busy with work. My son was accepted to his first choice university and has started living on his own. Although I miss him, I finally have time for myself again and have resumed my old hobby of rock climbing. From now on, I'm going to live my life doing what I love.